tunafaa kuogopa Nairobi mm. tuna share i'm not too sure what we are sharing is resources is infrastructure i i really don't know what we are sharing but nimesikia unafaa kuogopa Nairobi mm. yeah meanwhile good morning if you have just joined us you are watching the Lydia's Pepper show in this here town and i told you please do not take my word for it just watch like monday all the way through friday just yani ukiamka tu hivi uamsha pia tv na waketu why alafu jibambe just <laughs> enjoyment just and it's 2021 that means we have things for you that you probably have never seen before are we together and we have a post on our socials and we are trying to figure out when to recover from 2020 but i have a suggestion guys uh, just a kind one hmm? don't come beat me but uh, something I, i read honestly i read <laughs> the newspaper about three articles talking about high expectations so <coughs> Mimi naona maybe perhaps since one endament conference in India this this year in, in a few weeks I'm thinking maybe perhaps okay see at wezi kwana women's conference to mnangoja mtumiwe fair na tumi I'm not your boyfriend <laughs> We don't do that here but I'm thinking perhaps maybe this year if if you want a man with a car also you nani see hata ujitume hata wewe uko na gari ndio si ndio if you want a man with a lot of money nani see hata wewe upate hizo paki ama I'm going to find you a boy child help me out Hashtag #why in the morning i mean since you keep saying also what a man can do a woman can do better see you can also hmm? no okay at one on facebook white five four channel on twitter hashtag is why in the morning welcome again it is time to celebrate a phenomenal woman and she is as beautiful as she is phenomenal but let me allow her to introduce herself to you ladies and gentlemen good morning good morning how are you Please introduce yourself to the people. Um so my name is Gatara Amiru. Um the founder of Sauti Underscore Kenya. Um it's a social political movement and I'm also a mediator and a lawyer. Mhm. Yeah. That's a, that's a heavy flex and you've said it with such a straight face. <laughs> oh, I'm gelala if I was a lawyer sijui sijui found out. Ah yeah yeah yeah. You know this poor be doctor <laughs> professor sijui uh, uh, advocate. Woo! Mge God knows what to give us. <laughs> oh <my> God <laughs> does. <laughs> He really does. Okay, tell me a little bit about yourself and why you started the non-profit first. Um I'm basically a social justice activist. Um I call for the protection of human rights. And one of the reasons why um we decided I'd say Saudi is a movement. It's not a particular person. So one of the reasons why we decided to come up with Saudi underscore Kenya is the realization that Kenyans and in particular the youth do not have access to civic education. So basically what Saudi underscore Kenya does is spread information mm -hmm. especially when it comes to constitutional issues and arising matters um through the use of social media. Mm. Um, with the view that uh, Kenyans are going to be empowered to make better and informed decisions mm -hmm. especially when it comes to choosing leaders uh, yeah, that's now the main agenda of Saudi underscore Kenya on the other side we have now mediation for Saudi underscore Kenya we are trying to f create a future where we do not necessarily have to go to court mm -hmm. to solve issues hey, thank God. Um, where we can use alternative dispute resolutions which is actually recognized in at, uh, at article 159 of the constitution mm -hmm. so we are focusing on mediation because it's easily accessible it's affordable and it actually gives the disputing parties more control over the process mm -hmm. so yeah that is basically saudi underscore kenya i don't know if you know but court is not easy guys <laughs> Reza <laughs> shida kotidi almost 15 years for one thing one thing and one year unaza shida tu kisukuma okay yeah the hearing has been postponed oh the judge sijui has gone where hey sijui woo so when i hear outside court it's, it sounds fantastic yeah. to me um actually um apart from what you've said we've realized that court has become less accessible especially right now when we have the um, covid regulations mm -hmm. and this issue to do with covid so you find that most uh, court processes are online and how many people have access to free wifi mm -hmm. how many people are going to 
get laptops or smartphones to enable them log in and follow through on their matter. But you see with mediation, all you need is to get a good mediator, mm -hmm. find you the person who you're disputing with, sit down and come to agreements. And the good thing with mediation is the parties, it repairs relationships. You know, it's not adversarial, like how you go to court and now we have the plaintiff and we have the defendant Defendants. and now you you want to kill each other, you are at each other's throat. It's not about that. It's basically mending relationships and making sure each and every Kenyan is in a position to access justice, which is a constitutional right. Mm. Yeah. And I can relate because I have uh, walked around around courthouse and the people I see, just like old people trying to, you know, get back their land yeah. or, you know, some type of divvying situation. Somebody passed away, did not have a will, so not full of fighting. Yeah. And I see people who are struggling, who I'm like, oh, ah, you have not lived all these years, Manze, to now finish it like yeah, this. Yeah. What's, anyway, when activism comes to my mind, what I immediately relate to it is Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. or closer to home police brutality. It has to be, or as I perceive it, it has to be kind of provoked, <laughs> for lack of a better word, by something, you know? Yeah. And until something really major happens, like, you know, George Floyd being, they did him how they did him, until then now there was a worldwide outbreak, until, you know, some, I don't know, this is alleged because I, I don't know if it's true or not, but police brutality that has been going on, sana sana with COVID-19, you know, restrictions. I don't know who is on the wrong, manyana pigwa, because also we're supposed to be in the house by 10. Mm. So really, I don't know what's going on there. But when activism comes to my mind, is it always violent? Is it always about someone being <sighs> dealt with? Um, not okay. If you judge from history, mm -hmm. and now the history of activism, you'll see it's, like you said, provoked. But now we are trying to change the narrative where everybody becomes an activist. Um, because not only do we have issues like police brutality, we have issues like gender inequality. Um, we have, like I said, access to justice. And now the problem with now the narrative that we have about activism is we want to put everything into small, small boxes mm -hmm. instead of now looking at it from a whole some perspective where if we sort one issue, if people actually do not know their rights as a wholesome. We won't have to now particularize and say, now today we are going to deal with gender issues. No, you're going to know, I as a Kenyan, this is right, mm -hmm. this is wrong. Um, when it comes to now, for example, the issues of police brutality, um, you said each and every person is supposed to be in the house mm -hmm. by 10. Um, and if you're caught, there are processes that are supposed to be followed. Mm -hmm. So if you already know your rights, you'll know that I've been caught violating the law, mm -hmm. I'm on the wrong. So what is the next process? Take me to court, mm -hmm. take me to the police station, give me my bail, don't ask me for extra chums mm -hmm. so that I can, you know, mm -hmm. get out of the space. So um, when we talk about activism, I'd say basically let's talk about equity and uh, equality. Mm -hmm. Equity is giving people what they deserve in an equal manner. Mm. Yeah. I know that we have, mm. we have vehemently, okay, I don't know if that's the word to use, but it, I want the oomph that it brings, that we have really empowered the girl child. And I, I want to say I'm sorry, but I imagine I'm not. Like, I'm not. Like, there was, and I kid you not, there's still some people, you know, going through some certain types of things. Like, you have your periods, and it's a monthly thing, Tafadali, but you do not have access to sanitary towels. So you sit on a f in the dirt for days until you say, ha! Namuyata nyesha for a whole week. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't know if it slaps different because I'm female, but okay. So we've come from that, although some people are still experiencing it, to now we can go to school. Now somebody, you know, m might get pregnant, but give birth and then go back to school. I, I like the options that the girl child has been given, but the boy child now does not know how to deal with us now that we've been empowered. Is that activism? Um, 
I'd say activism in that sense is as as the boy child. You know, we want, we we really have a good constitution, mm -hmm. the 2010 constitution. And um, in the 2010 constitution, they've brought about uh, issues of affirmative action, mm -hmm. which has really enabled the female child. Um, to some extent, it has left the boy child feeling a little bit neglected. Mm -hmm. But if we were to say activism in the scope of the boy child, what is the boy child doing mm -hmm. to bridge the gap that is, mm -hmm. that is now widening, mm -hmm. you see? Um, Let's, let's, let's have a good example. The gender bill mm -hmm. that was supposed to be passed last year and that is still being debated. You know, if we had good politicians, mm -hmm. they'd actually tell us the gender bill is not the female bill. Like, we, mm -hmm. you know, like right now, we're in a position where most, um, personally I've worked in a company where more than two thirds were women. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell me men do not need the gender bill? You see, mm -hmm. so um, what if in the next 20 years, each and every corporate has only female leading? Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. so now is that when we want to now start having a conversation on the gender bill? Mm -hmm. so you see, so what is the boy child doing to also enable themselves to put them in a position where they can compete with the, the, with the female child? Mm -hmm. Why Saudi? How did you come up with that name? Um, Saudi underscore Kenya was, it was an idea that we, <laughs> that we had, we were sitting for exams. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you, okay, I was at the University of Nairobi and we were really pressed because we were not getting our results. So we were, how can we advocate our issues? Mm -hmm. um, so my friends were like, maybe we should go to the media stations. But then again, what we realized is most of these media stations are not independent enough. Mm -hmm. You see, um, they have... That's very diplomatic, uh-huh. They have, um, I'd say, the deep state in the fourth, <laughs> in the fourth government, yeah? Mm -hmm. So even if you were to take our issues to a particular TV station, would they be courageous enough to air out our views without making us sound like so we decided to come up with an independent mm -hmm. station via social media where mm -hmm. we are not aligned to any person. Mm -hmm. We basically give you the facts, it's for you to choose. For example, if we are talking about BBI, we'll tell you what BBI is. We won't tell you vote for BBI, don't vote for BBI. It's for you to understand the document, then you can make a sound informed decision as opposed to now telling you this thing is going to help you in this way, it might be helpful to me, but is it helpful to you? Mm -hmm. So that was basically it. Saudi underscore Kenya is basically trying to have an independent voice when it comes to advocating for issues of social justice. I was asked recently by someone who does not live here, and she states, and at the time mm. there were, you know, going all crazy, waiting for the votes to be counted for Biden to get into office. I love I was there giving thoughts, mm, trying to sound intelligent. And then, Nikaulizo, what is BBI? I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I went on. By the way, I gave like a whole paragraph. <laughs> I'm sure he's sorry he was asked. <laughs> but I gave a whole paragraph. And it was honestly, honestly very emotional for me because there are certain clauses in the thing that I really don't agree with. And they're very hidden, you know? You, you just go say, yay, let's do this, but mm -mm, there's like a trap somewhere. But if you were to just logically, in a sentence, explain what it is, could you be able to? Um, if I was to explain PBI, I'd say it's the 2010 constitution mm -hmm. expanded. Mm -hmm. Basically what they've done is they've Wamechukua Constitution in 2010, mm -hmm. made it to look uh, more favorable, mm -hmm. but the clauses are basically still the same. Mm -hmm. No major amendments, mm -hmm. apart from a few chapters. Now when we come to the chapters of representation, um, the legislature, the, ju the judiciary, now that is where you're going to see the major changes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but if you were to read the 2010 constitution and compare to the BBA document that we have right now, you'd actually not tell that it's like a copy paste, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm, okay. Natutatua pesa. Yeah, and natutatua pesa mingi sana. You know, personally, um, most of the things that are in this document, they would be easily made into gazetted laws, mm -hmm. like a bill. Mm -hmm. For example, when they talk about um, now putting mediation under a whole article in the Constitution, why don't they come up with a mediation bill mm -hmm. that will not only, you know, if you look at the 2010 constitution, you'll have a particular article, you'll go to court, but the article is not enough. It doesn't explain. Oh. You know, for example, um, article 27 that talks about um, equality. Mm -hmm. We have so many cases in court trying to define the article in itself. Mm -hmm. So instead of now having a whole constitutional change, mm -hmm. why don't we now take chapter four of the constitution, make it into a bill mm -hmm. that explains now the constitution. Mm -hmm. um, if it's about now electoral processes, why don't we put more emphasis on electoral justice instead of now adding more seats? Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure we've had to 70 MPs, I don't see how having, I don't know, 370, I'm it's 390. If to 70 or machine, well, please tell me how. 370 is Yeah, what I was like, you see. Mm -hmm. So um, they should now find a way of making the 2010 constitution more understandable. One thing I know is, for example, if I was to buy a car right now, mm -hmm. and um, I do not know how to drive, mm -hmm. then I get me a driver who equally doesn't know how to drive. So am I going to buy a new car or am I going to look for a driver <laughs> who can actually drive? <laughs> you see? Uh, so we have a very good document. Uh -huh. Now the problem is implementation mm -hmm. and the people who we have chosen to implement the constitution. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, let's now add, let's have um, 94 senators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And remember, it's not that Kenya, we are doing that well financially, you know, even the audacity of just, you know. So um, why don't they find a way of making sure that we have free and fair elections? Mm -hmm. Because even if we have all those positions that they're creating and still elections get rigged, mm -hmm. Still, people who don't accept results. Please, we're still going to have the same issue in the next general elections, mm -hmm. in as much as we're going to spend billions mm -hmm. in having a constitutional referendum. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's basically my take on the BBI document. All I had is we're spending money, guys. Money we don't have, but again. <laughs> on a I process we do not do need. Mm -hmm. <coughs> anyway. Moving on, on a lighter note, I see Pikichas. Uh, what's going on over here? Walk me through it. Um, so over here, we were at Lucky Summer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, these are, okay, so at Lucky Summer, what we do is we use school going children mm -hmm. to clean up the environment. That's nice, giving them things yeah. to do. So um, these are Saturday events. Mm -hmm. So what happens during the weekdays is we go to school, from school to school teaching them about now, like I said, civic education. In as much as they're young, we are told that now these are the future generations. So if they do not have a good understanding on, of leadership mm -hmm. at the um, basic level, how will they be able to comprehend when they are maybe now capable of voting? I like that because also <sighs> we need to learn to respect authority, no matter how it comes. You know. Just because some authority is not very <coughs> convenient or nice, that does not mean we have a choice whether mm. we should, you know, be obedient to it or not. Mm. What's going on over here? So um, here we were at Kibo's General Prison. Mm -hmm. It's in Kisumu. We had gone to offer legal aid services to the inmates. That's so nice. Um, like, you know... And practical. Um, we really have... Um, I'm sorry to say, but truth be told, we really have a corrupt justice system. Mm -hmm. 
And I'd actually say the judiciary is failing mm -hmm. the, um, now Kenyans because if you go to now even just the basic committee, you'll find that so many innocent people are inside there due to lack of information and lack of finances. So basically what we do is go to prisons. Mm -hmm. um, they tell us about now what, 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 why they're there offer them advice for those who have serious, serious cases, refer them to now organizations like Kenya Human Rights. Um, if it's now an issue with the police, you can refer them to IPOA. Yeah, that's basically it. There was, oh, okay, let's, let's do this first. W what is this, B Biosombari? Um, no, over here we, uh, we were at the University of Nairobi. We were actually debating on the Punguza Mzigo Bill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we were there to give our opinion. Mm -hmm. um, now these were the facilitators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was a story that trended a while ago where, uh, see, I don't have names in my head right now, but the story, the gist of the story was there was a man who was imprisoned because um, his daughter apparently fabricated a lie that she had been raped by him. And apparently, as I was listening to the story, again, this is very hearsay things. Even though it's news, I had it and I'm saying it, hearsay. So apparently the mom was the masterminded of all that. So he was released, I think, a few weeks ago, coming to the end of 2020. And it was a whole thing. I was on TV, you know, talking about how I forgive you, what, what, you know. And I'm thinking, what happens if later on in life, uh, uh, Sumetu, you know what, I can't let this go. What does that mean for him? Would he have to take it to court, but he's already served a sentence? Okay. Um, now, f let me talk about something we call restorative mediation. Mm -hmm. Restorative mediation is where we try to c reconcile inmates with the community and their family members, yeah? Mm -hmm. But now if you look at this case, um, the one that you're talking about, I'd basically say the, the man suffered great injustices, yeah? Yes. This is basically one, to prove mm -hmm. a case of rape mm -hmm. or defilement because I'm guessing the kid was, the daughter was underage. Mm -hmm. For the, you to prove a case of defilement and um, rape, the, the standards are a little bit high. Mm -hmm. So how did he end up in jail in the first in place? Jail in mm -hmm. the first place? And to answer your question, he said he's forgiven the family, but let's look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. What if we have a repeat of the same? Oh, you know. <sighs> that shook me a bit, okay. Huh? What if we have because let's face it, this man has really lost a lot. Mm -hmm. And even Kenyans are losing a lot because now precedence has already been set mm -hmm. by that decision that was made. So what next? Mm -hmm. So in as much as he has forgiven the family, what is now the director of public prosecution doing to hold these two people accountable? Mm -hmm. In as much as we want to say they've forgiven, remember this was a judicial process that was taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. And we want to deter women from making f uh, false rape accusations. Mm -hmm. Because what, does, what that does is to water down claims yes. no, of no people who have legitimate us. claims, yeah. you know. Um, the next time maybe someone goes to report um, at the police station, they'll be, you know, the, and then you know how cops are. It will be harder, you know. So to avoid that, mm -hmm. to re avoid a repeat of the same, mm -hmm. why don't we prosecute these people? Mm -hmm. Because um, the, the law serves different purposes. And one of the purposes is deterrence, mm -hmm. to deter people from doing something. So let us prosecute this lady mm -hmm. and the daughter. Mm -hmm. Let them face the full effects of the law. Mm -hmm. Then when they are facing the judicial process, now the man can go and tell the judge, mm -hmm. I want a withdrawal. We've come to this and this and this. Then the judge will be in a position to determine and weigh mm -hmm. the best way to go about it. Mm -hmm. But we cannot take matters into our own hands and say we've forgiven. Mm -hmm. 
we can only forgive, but are we going to forget? Hmm. That's deep. Yeah. Well, okay. All right. So, <coughs> that I have questions <laughs> and I have comments. Do you have any? At White Five on Facebook, White Five on channel on Twitter. Hashtag is Y in the morning. What happens to, okay, this I, I see generally in just movies and series, obviously American, and I, I find it interesting that you can actually sue the state for something that they have done, whether it's damages in, in whatever state or form. But what happens to Mwiziwakuku Manze, who has no way to represent themselves or have someone represent them, can spend near a lifetime, seven years upwards in jail. Mwezi wa kuku. Nani aliba kuku juu alikuwa nja. Siati alikuwa na kuibia alama at UCMK the next day. No, like his problems were legit. But after this person comes out, is there, can you sue the state? Can you get your compensation at least? Um, for the man, um, now let's separate the two incidences. Mm -hmm. Remember, um, here we have the rape case. He was falsely accused. Mm -hmm. He can get remedies. He can file a civil suit mm -hmm. against the director of public prosecutions because they're the ones who prosecuted the matter mm -hmm. and he is entitled to damages. On the other side, umesama kusum tu akuku. Let me quote the Bible. Akuna small sin. Akuna small sin, big sin. You see, um, these processes are guided by acts. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to crime, we have the penal code. Mm -hmm. So if the penal code says um, for stealing, you go in for five years, the best thing the judge can do, because they have been given discretion, they can now weigh the merit of the case. Mm -hmm. They can use their discretion and say, okay, maybe Kuku, five years, why don't you do? You see, and this is, okay, the law is unfair, but it has to apply. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd, be ha we'd have people stealing just for the sake, because Akishikwa atenda kufagia, you know. Mm. So um, we have to follow the law. Basically, that is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But we have to follow it to the letter, not um, selectively. Why am I saying this? Mm -hmm. You've said kuna mtu atenda ndani, mm -hmm. kuku, mm -hmm. and that someone else will be voted in. I love to more accuse. Yeah. Allah for they are faint Kenyatta Hospital. Have I you know. forgotten that instant? I'm an Mimi too. So where mm -hmm. is the justice in this? Mm -hmm. Why am I being prosecuted for stealing? Maybe and wom to my neighbor kuku, most likely yoni out of necessity. Mm -hmm. You know. But there's someone, as we actually speak right now, someone somewhere is siphoning public funds. Mm. You Talking know. about schools and desks and chairs. Yeah. And trees. Somebody somewhere is siphoning public funds. And then Kutakwana will so blow up. Mm -hmm. And then they'll give us the whole show, arrest. Mm -hmm. Then they'll be given bail terms, bail terms that are not even reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yet, we may be able to get 200,000. This person has stolen billions, billion, one million. Mm -hmm. L that is like small change. Mm -hmm. Then now the process will drag on, we will forget, then we'll have other scandals, and by the time we know, now the files are missing. Mm -hmm. You see? So, um, I'd say it's a corrupt system, but we have to make it work, us as Kenyans, because in as much as we want to hold our, our politicians accountable, we also have to look at individual accountability. We have to look at um, collective responsibility as us as Kenyans. What are we doing? to make sure that we have better. You know, like when the show started, you talked about high expectations. Mm -hmm. You cannot have high expectations of someone mm -hmm. when yourself, you have nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. So we cannot expect us to have good leaders when us ourselves, we don't want to educate ourselves on the law. We don't want to uh, elect good leaders. What we want to do is, you know, um, be fanatics. Huh? When we continue with that narrative, that is, we will continue complaining about, oh, I will continue complaining about, oh, I will accuse you falsely. You know, mm -hmm. because 
John Grisham, who is my favorite author. <laughs> hey, I like him too. We, as a people, get mm -hmm. the leaders we deserve. Well, that says a lot about us as people. Yes, mm -hmm. we get the leaders that we deserve. So, if we get this, it's because we're also stealing from ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, have you, if you look at now, for example, right now, go to social media. Mm -hmm. A basic conversation about the BBI, which has scared Mimi is support because so and so is supporting. Mm -hmm. So and so has sel a self-interest in the document. Mm -hmm. You, as yourself, mm -hmm. in the next 20 years, because imagine right now if Kenya eco mm -hmm. sai. Please, what about in the next 20 years? Mm -hmm. How will it be? Mm -hmm. Look at the education system oh. right now. Mm -hmm. Children apparently now they're supposed to study. Oh, sorry, to study under trees. Mm -hmm. um, and with this COVID issue, I've seen the importance of education. Mm -hmm. But now, uyum toto monyana samachi niamti. How will you convince this person that this good, th this thing is good for them, when they are struggling, when they are not supposed to struggle, mm -hmm. when the government has funds to make sure they do not struggle? At an early age, you're already suffering like someone who's seventy. So uh, when you're 20, what will happen? I, I read somewhere, okay, I don't really have the, the numbers and we gotta wind up. Can I just be just calling you, just asking you questions? You're like a fountain of information. You're, you're so welcome. Cool. Anyway, so anyway, I, I read somewhere that Rwanda, by the end of 2020, had spent in billions enough to revamp the school infrastructure. That means to fit the COVID-19 guidelines. What did we do in 2020? Mm -hmm. What did we do? Mm, we, we campaigned. And then we went back and told politicians, no, we can't campaign because you're also the one who mefunga watu, who no public events. So really, what do you want? Notwithstanding that there are people who did not have access to school online, but now they're expected to <laughs> study with their peers and keep up. So, <clears throat> like, bah, it's getting me emotional. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know anything, guys. Clearly, I know nothing, but I'm going to know things now. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, I'm really glad I met her. So how do we support you? How do we follow you? How do we keep up? How do we stay woke? We need to know things because no one can take knowledge away from you. Um, first and foremost, read. You know, no one can steal information from you. Mm -hmm. No one can steal your, okay, they can steal your votes, but so long as you knew you voted in mm -hmm. with the right intention, one day it will count. Mm -hmm. So read, inform yourself, and uh, I'm sorry to say, but <laughs> sometimes it's good to get away from the streets of Twitter, mm -hmm. because um, us as youths, Nikama Twitter and make our new constitution. We are swayed very easily. Yeah, you know, like, um, it's good to have these conversations because they spark emotions, um, constructive conversations, but yes, you've seen a post. Now, engage with their post. Want to know further. Say, I told me when I'm trying to post it, I'm going retweet. What are you retweeting for? Mm -hmm. You know, why? Mm -hmm. Read, educate yourself, spread information, and the right information, because we have information, but we want the right information mm -hmm. out there. Um, to support us, basically follow our pages on Instagram, that is Saudi underscore Kenya. If you have videos of now the social injustices going on, if you have a story, post, give it to us. You can go live, spread, and share. Mm -hmm. Twitter, it's Gatura underscore Gatura. Um, I'm not on Facebook, Sana. You're a cheer, <laughs> but yeah, basically that is it for Nosauti. Just spread information, the right kind of information. Read, read the constitution, read the laws. And the good thing is now we have internet. Mm -hmm. Go to Kenya Law Reports. Everything is given to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not for you to interact. When it comes to choosing in leaders, Choose the right leaders, not for yourself, but for the future generations. You know, mm -hmm. I'd want my kid to grow up in a society where they do not have to fear being accused falsely of mm -hmm. rape as a man. You know, as a woman, I'd want my daughter to to go look for work and get the job out of merit. Mm -hmm. 
mm. you know, not because of so and so, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Mm. Guys, I don't know about you, but I am quite sure. Kune kakito ati when you're in Nairobi, I don't even think it's a Nairobi thing. Just like when you get to public transport, kama ni mat, kama ni ndodi, kama ni taxi, whatever. When you get to apu useme tu, lucky ni serikali tu. I said story from where you have come from and hadi sometimes unezaga mambia pige pige la pa endele tu na story ju meshika ya. Just if you have anything that you need, you know, just holla at her man. Just she's here for you. For me, it's actually. You know, like how we say now, the, the audacity. Mm -hmm. For me, it's the audacity of our government. <laughs> yani, <laughs> where? But there's also, okay, we need to stop this conversation. <laughs> Guys, I can't stop. It's fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. There's this uh, saying also I read somewhere. Mm. Your government, a government can only be corrupt if the people themselves are corrupt first. So she didn't see sinani. Atana serikali kwanza. We are the problem because how can we allow corruption if we are not corrupt ourselves? And I'm starting with myself. I may think I may have done things <laughs> very small, but to share me, there's no small thing or big thing. It's just gotta follow the law to the letter. Okay. Yeah. Any last words before we close this up? Um, for me, I'd say is. My message to now the Kenyan youths, um, we are the majority in this country. And if we want, we can actually change the direction. We don't have to, it's okay to follow counsel from our old folks, but now interact with now the current situations, what is happening around our, our country, around the globe, interact with each and every aspect then I'll make the right decision so that we can have a better country. I am tired of having to, you know, look for a job for seven months just because. Mm. Tamaki, know? it's yeah. like a rite of passage. It, but should it be there though? No. You know, mm. in as much as maybe we'd say, um, we don't have the capacity to employ each and every person. Let's make Kenya a better space where, in as much as you can't get employment, you can be the one to create the employment. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. That's deep. Meanwhile, we, we are creating more seats <laughs> for the government, yeah. but there's no money. Anyway, once again, my name is Valentine, or it's Color Me Val, but you can find us at White 5 on Facebook, Y254 channel on a Twitter, hashtag is Wonder Morning. We are trying to figure out how to recover from 2020. But let me tell you a secret. Not everyone is suffering. <laughs> Tafa Valley. Did you know, did you know there's a... Juzin Mona Hotel Impia, Impia, yeah. Impia. And the way the hotel industry has been hit. Ah, like, brah! Anyway, it's the same way not everyone is eating cabbage this January. <laughs> it's called money laundering. <laughs> hey! Well, <laughs> we're just going to give you sauce, sauce a little bit, and then we'll be right back with our panelists for the final segment of the show. Stay wise. Thank you.